Welcome back to Dinosaur Island Revival. Here we are on the outer rim of the dark woodland where the raptor pack lives. Shaman is on patrol, keeping watch in case any predators are nearby. Dagger, Cutlass, and Shadow are resting. And Switchblade and Shredder are also on watch for predators. Here we can see the family resting after hunting this morning. Their bellies are full. It has been a week since Shadow kicked out Fred from the pack. Dagger has noticed and has ruined the relationship between Shadow and Dagger. At least for a while, it would seem the relationship is healing. And that is a good thing for Shadow. Dagger wakes up. He looks around. He goes back to sleep. Meanwhile, here we see Shredder and Switchblade reminiscing of their times in their old pack. Many of you will know that they were both in the same pack long ago. A pack consisting of a Uteraptor named Katana, Switchblade, Shredder, Switchblade's mother Violet, and his father Razor. They were one huge pack. It's been a long time. A long time since they've seen the other members. You may not know this, but Shredder was once considered huge for a Uteraptor. And he still is. However, it would seem his son has grown larger than he has. The genes have passed down. As we can see, Shaman is actually larger than his father. We do not know who his mother is, but we can only speculate she was a large Uteraptor as well. Switchblade hears something in the bushes. He tells Shredder to go check it out. <laughs> it would seem the predator that Shredder has found is Alan, the Uteraptor. <laughs> Shadow rises to see what Shredder has brought him. The rest of the Uteraptors gather round to see what all the commotion is about. Alan and Shadow stare into each other's eyes. Silence is all that fills the area the Uteraptors are living in right now. The intensity levels are high, and neither of them make a noise. Shadow asks why Alan is here. Alan has come for forgiveness and wishes to join the pack. Shadow considers what Alan tells him, but then he remembers. He remembers what Alan did to him, what Alan did to his son. This cannot be forgiven. And even if he did, the other raptors would see Shadow as weak for allowing this traitor to join. He has no choice. He sends away his old friend and walks off. <sighs> Alan tries to get Shadow's attention to make him reconsider. But no, Shadow's mind has been made. 
and he banishes Alan forever from this pack and from the dark woodland. To make sure he leaves, he's escorted by Shaman, one of his best friends, who is now turned to Shadow's side. But he still has feelings for his friend and feels sorry for Alan. The two friends say their farewells and Alan leaves. Meanwhile, here we are at the Season 1 Spinosaur Nest. This is the very spot that Nimbus was born. They have returned here because this is the place they feel that if Red Sail is looking for them, he will go. However, what they do not know is that Red Sail is looking for some other dinosaurs that aren't his family. Ever since Anubis died and Red Seal's gone missing, Nimbus and Alexa have been starving. Food at the river has been very scarce. That's why they've moved here. There, where there isn't a river at all, though. And the only dinosaurs that live here are tough, hardy beasts. Getting food is very difficult, especially when you're down to only two Spinosaurs from what used to be a pack of four. Nimbus isn't doing well, but the one that's doing the absolute worst is Alexa. She's on the brink of starvation and is desperate for a meal. She will fight anything that comes into her eyesight. Speaking of which, a herbivore is passing by. A large bull, Pentaceratops. Mm. <laughs> Dinosaurs mm -hmm. Maximus have very little experience with fighting Ceratopsians, but this will have to do. Nimbus comes in for the attack. Nimbus is finding it very hard to tear through the Pentaceratops' tough hide, as his teeth are more designed for eating fish than large herbivores. Instead, Alexa tries using her tough, powerful claws. This seems to be more effective, but still is no match for the Pentaceratops. This backs off, as he knows that getting injured now would only make the situation worse. But Alexa is dying. She needs this kill. She will stop at nothing to get it. <sighs> Alexa and the Pentaceratops face off, each looking at the other. One fighting for survival, the other fighting for food. Who will win? And who will perish? <laughs> Nimbus tends to his mother. She has just taken two horns to the stomach. This is a killing blow for a Ceratopsian, but for a Spinosaur. Only a minor injury. Alexa will survive this wound, but it will not help their situation. Now they're down to only one Spinosaur that is able to hunt, and that is Nimbus. And he promises to find his mother food if it's the last thing he does. Alexa manages to get herself up and 
tries to walk back to her nest to heal. Meanwhile, in the Great Divide, as night is drawing near, we can see the misfit herd of herbivores are resting. The Minmi is on watch as Theo Para and the Brapasaurus sleep. Meanwhile, not far away, it would seem that Cleo and Rogue are getting up to something. After mating, Rogue goes to sleep, and Cleo lies awake, worrying. They're trying to have a child, some new offspring, some additions to their pack. But Cleo, much like Alexa, is starving. To different reasons, though. Rogue has been eating almost all of the food and is accidentally starving Cleo. Cleo is too scared to say anything else. So she just stands by and is waiting for death. She will have to act up soon or else her and her children will not make it. One hour later, at the oasis, we can see Ripsaw getting some of the last sunlight of the day. And Eggy grazing in the lush plant life that resides here. It's a very lonely existence for the two of them. There's not much company in the oasis, at least on the outskirts of it anyway. Further into the forest, the animals get bigger and deadlier. But it seems they're about to get some new company. Eggy hears something and turns around. Mm -hmm. Eggy is the Ceratopsian herd. Mm -hmm. Buck goes racing towards Eggy. One of the hadrosaurs that have raised Buck throughout his childhood, one of the last surviving ones. And now, he has met him once again. The two share a tender moment. It's nice to see that they have both survived this long. Eggy tells Buck of what happened to the rest of the Hadrosaur herd. Buck is deeply saddened by this. Cindy and Ollie were two of his great pals growing up. Now that they are dead, it's very sad for him. Tony rushes in. Mm. He asks to see if it's okay for them to stay in this area overnight. Eggy, only because of Buck, allows them to stay. And so, Tony tells the rest of the herd they can stay. And now they can rest. Zeus thanks Iggy for letting the Ceratopsian herd stay here. It's a big thing to ask, especially how many Ceratopsians there are and how little plant life there is for Iggy when they leave. It doesn't take long for the Ceratopsians to spread throughout the oasis and start digging in on the water and the plant life. Sometime in the past week, Blaze has found his herd, much like Shaman has found his pack, as we saw earlier on in the episode. Blaze is happy to have made it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Polly is struggling to get along with the journey. The only reason she's still alive is because Sophia has been nurturing her this whole way. Tony wanted to leave her long ago, but Sophia has objected. All these wounds from the T-Rexes have pr proven very difficult for her, and the herd is not sure whether she will survive the trip 
to the north or not. But Sophia has high hopes. While the rest of the herd is busy eating, Tony comes along to see Polly, but not to see how she's doing. He's getting ready to do a killing blow. Polly is something he does not wish to deal with, and he wishes to cut her off like an infected limb. <laughs> Tony approaches Sophia. Maybe it's her that needs to be cut off, and not Polly. He decides to take action. <laughs> Sophia is Strack's adopted daughter. He will not see her in harm's way. Even if that means defying the leader of the herd. Tony prepares to kill Strack. He's furious. Strack has crossed the line this time. Quickly, Zeus intervenes. And screams at his son for trying to kill his friend. And screams at Strack for trying to kill his son. They're being childish. Zeus asks Tony to call it off. To not make a rash decision. Tony agrees not to kill Strack. But he will kick out Sophia from the herd for her insolence. Mm. 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 Strack goes to defend Sophia. He will not have her leave. Mm. Tony reminds Strack of his place and his honor to not defy the leader of the herd. Strack abides by his honor and lets his daughter go. He knows he's raised her right. She'll be safe. And so, Sophia and Strack say their final farewells. Mm. 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 Strack watches his daughter leave the herd. Mm. This time, he ever sees Sophia again. And he knows that her leaving will not go unanswered for. Mm. This whole situation has caused a division in the herd. Those who are loyal to Tony and those who are appalled by his ways. Polly walks off, thankful for her life. She has her best friend to thank for that. Her best friend she will never see again. While Quill, the Aeneasaurus, spots something. A little lizard hiding in the brush. It would seem Quill has killed the lizard. A very peculiar thing for a Ceratopsian to do. But not unheard of. They did sometimes eat small animals. And Quill... Quill does a lot of this. He's a very strange little ceratops. He's distracted with his kill. Something is hunting him. Ripsaw. Ripsaw was also hunting that lizard. <laughs> and knocks it out of Quill's mouth. Quill is not happy with this. <laughs> 
Repsol wins the fight and takes the lizard away. Quill lies there, beaten and disappointed. It would seem in Quill's anger he has bumped into Orion. He's very scared of Orion. He's heard the tales of what he's done and learns to keep his distance from him next time. Orion watches the strange Ceratopsian leave and he goes back to his grazing. Mm. In his meal, in his mouth. Oh.